Um, I don't know who turned that one on, but it wasn't me. <laughs> You're just gonna, yeah. Right. Thank you.
right. All right, if everybody could please take their seats, we'll get started momentarily. have a lot to get through today. So let's go ahead and get started. If we could, everybody please get seated. Hello, my name is Will Cotterman. I am the president and CEO of EAA, Engineers Alliance for the Arts, and I'd like to welcome you all today. So thank you for being here. <coughs> Excuse me. First little bit of, uh, of, of coronavirus uh, housekeeping. So UC Berkeley protocol is that um, if you are vaccinated, Masks are strongly recommended. If you are not vaccinated, they are required. Um, so that is my PSA on that front. I'm going to try to look up as much as possible. For the last two years, I've been presenting into one of these, much like many of you. So if you see me staring down, uh, just know that we're all trying to get back to being in person again. So um, thank you all for being here. What a wonderful event. Um, UC Berkeley has been such gracious hosts to give us this space. And so we'll have Mark Stacy from UC Berkeley Civil and Environmental Engineering come up in a minute. Um, I'd like to welcome you all today and just kind of set the tone for the afternoon. So during the past 22 years, Engineers Alliance for the Arts has graduated 6,500 students um, in, through this program. And that has come uh, with the help of 685 volunteers and 50 architecture, engineering, and construction firms in the process, many of whom are represented in this room today. <clears throat> we are here because we are celebrating 10 plus weeks of work by you all, the students. Um, so thank you all for that wonderful effort. And I thought I'd take a moment just to contextualize the process that you have all gone through for the people in the room who have not been a part of it. So in the past 10 weeks, and babies are okay, let's keep those babies. We like, we like, we like babies. <laughs> um, all right, so as a parent of a small ch child, I know that you know, crying babies are just kind of a, the, the part of life. So. Um, <laughs> 10 plus weeks of work have gone into this program, and you all are here today as a celebration of that and also to finalize and present your work out to, to your peers and to um, the people who have helped you. And so I wanted to take a moment and think about kind of what that means. Obviously, our mission here at Engineers Alliance of the Arts is to inspire and educate students about the interaction of art, architecture, engineering, and construction. And as part of that, we want you all to understand what engineers and contractors go through in order to build the world around you, right? Part of this program is to design a real world scenario or a bridge for a real world scenario that actually allows you to apply your thinking to that particular scenario. But if you don't choose to be an engineer, architect, or contractor in your life, I wanted to make a connection for you. So if you can think about a movie, show, or product that you love. I see some people, you know, we all have our phones, maybe they should be silenced if they aren't already. I love my phone, right? Just take this as an example. But if you think about every single one of those things, that there were groups of people, teams of people who had ideas, they had to pitch those ideas in written form. They had to communicate those ideas to their peers. They had to collaborate. They went to many meetings to, uh, in order to make that happen, right? And they left those meetings happy. They left those meetings frustrated. They were angry. And that whole process generated the thing that you love today. And that's a skill that no matter what you do in life, you will have gotten from this program or practiced in this program that you'll be able to take forward with you. So with that, I can't wait to hear all of your presentations and make these bridges come to life because I've seen them all and they look fantastic, but there's a story behind each and every one of them and why you did what you did. And that's what we're going to get to hear today. So with that, let me move into a set of introductions to make sure that we are thanking and recognizing all the people that make this event possible and then we'll get on with the show. How does that sound? Excellent. All right, so first and foremost, I would like to thank the Engineers Alliance for the Arts Executive Committee. And so I will ask all of you to go ahead and stand, please, if you will, uh, in order to be recognized. So those that are with us, sorry, I meant the Executive Committee. <laughs> sorry. 
Everybody will stand and stretch. Thank you. Sorry. All right. And you may be seated. All right. So these are the folks that help run the program year in and year out, um, all year round except for the, the 10 weeks. And, and many of them are actually involved in the 10-week program as well. We also have an advisory board that helps us to kind of steer our program in the right direction to benefit the, the stakeholders that are in the community that we serve. So these are our advisory board members, um, many of whom are actually judges as well. So I won't make them stand twice, but I will, uh, I will ask them to, uh, to stand here in a minute. But we really, really value their guidance and leadership and helping us shape this program. All right. This is the fun part. So I'm going to read these teachers by name. I'm going to try not to completely mess this up. And so as I read your name and we run through the teachers that are in the room, um, I would like you to stand up and be recognized because you folks are the ones who are there all year long and you also help make our program a great success in your classroom. So we'll start uh, alphabetically with Abraham Lincoln High School, Jake Stuckey and Valerie Ziegler. You're here. Thank you very much. Alameda Community Learning Center, Daniel Friedman. Carlmont High School, Ian Hagman. Envision Academy, Adam Siegel. Ida B. Wells, Heidi Langus, and David Stevens. Hopefully I said that right. Apologies if I didn't. Livermore High School, Karen Fletcher. Nia Community Learning Center, Heather Dutton. Oakland School for the Arts, Carly Klusser. <laughs> Pinole Valley High School, Angela Johnson. <laughs> Sacred Heart Cathedral Prep, Jeff Hunt. <laughs> and San Francisco Hilltop High School, Joseph Alter and Peter Liu. <laughs> All right. Excellent. Thank you very much. All right, on this, I also would like to take a moment to uh, thank, before we go any further, our executive director of the Engineers Alliance for the Arts. That's Miss Michelle Lehman. She is the woman who makes everything happen. Thank you. All right, and then let's move into the volunteer, or the judges, excuse me, before we get to the volunteers. So this up front are our row of esteemed uh, judges and panelists. So. Um, I will read you all by name if you could please stand up and be recognized as well for your efforts today and, and for your contributions. Robert Becker of Presenting Architecture. <laughs> Matthew DeJong of UC Berkeley. <laughs> Katie Taylor Ford of Ratcliffe Architecture. <clears throat> Excuse me. Ken Forward of PG&E. <laughs> Rupa Garai of Skidmore, Owings and Merrill. Kenneth Klein of Simpson, Gumperts, and Hager. Ray Puglisi of Dagen Kolb Engineers. Diana Skykalos, Skylakos, excuse me, of uh, Banana Republic. Thank you, Diana. Apologies. And John Tuttle of Golden State Steel and Stair. Also with us, a gentleman who read all of the essays for you all. I think you, you may have thought that those just went into the void, but they do not. They went to Mr. Derek Hom. Derek, if you're in the room. <laughs> as well as uh, Kelly Lyon Dudek. I don't know if Kelly's here today as well. She's not. Okay, perfect. Um, and many thanks to Steve Citrone, who's also on our board, for being a moderator of the judges today. All right. We are almost done with this. Thank you for hanging with me. So let's go to the next page. And these are all of our wonderful volunteer engineers, architects, and construction professionals who volunteered with you in the classroom and virtually. So I'm not going to read all of these names. That would be ridiculous. But I am going to ask them all to stand up. So if you could please stand and be recognized if you volunteered in the classroom. All right. And I haven't done this yet. And I realize I skipped it on my agenda. But I do need to recognize the handful of individuals on our executive committee who also help orchestrate and run the program in terms of education, curriculum, and coordination, in addition to Michelle. So that would be uh, Dima Cismaris. <laughs> I'm going to mess this up. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, this is not it. So Dima, uh, Rafael Tercios, and Simon Ng. So thank you. 
Okay. Now I get to stop talking and get off the stage. Uh, I've overstayed my welcome a little bit, but I want to welcome to the stage uh, Mark Stacy, who is the uh, department head for the Civil and Environmental Engineering Department at University of California at Berkeley. So thank you, Mark. Welcome. Thank you, Will. Um, I'm a little shorter than Will. <laughs> um, it's great to see all of you here, and it's just amazing to welcome you to the Berkeley campus. Um, I'm Mark Stacy. I'm department chair in, in Civil and Environmental Engineering, um, and I am super excited about this event, about this organization, and everything that it represents. Um, as engineers, we always actively engage our left brains. Um, we can't neglect our rights. Uh, I myself find a lot of inspiration and, and a lot of energy when the right side of the brain is energized. Um, when I view Monet po paintings, particularly seascapes, love them. A little bit cliche to say Monet's my favorite painter, but okay. Um, when you look at the seascapes that he paints, ask yourself if you can sense the wind. Can you tell how hard the wind is blowing? Is it a calm day with a light breeze? Is it howling? You can get that from the way he paints his seascape. I'm a fluid mechanics researcher, so I think about this interaction between the wind and the waves, and he's capturing something in the waves that conveys the environment, the wind, and you can sense it, you can feel it. Um, maybe you'll look a little differently at those paintings next time. So, um, Engineering itself can be art. We see it, we have 42 bridges out here. The symmetry, the balance that's required to make those structurally sound is itself aesthetic and artistic. It also becomes a canvas for the art. There are several examples out here of bridges where you've used the bridge to bring green infrastructure in, to create other artistic elements. So there's this, this interplay between engineering and the arts. Engineering also supports the arts. Think about the stagecraft and everything that goes into productions, the acoustics, not so great here, uh, but acoustics in, in, in environments like this. It's all about engineering. Fountains, the simplest of fountains, requires engineering infrastructure to support them. But it goes the other way as well. The arts challenge engineers to go further and become better. I'm thinking about structures that th whose by design it doesn't look like they should be able to stand up. And yet engineering needs to find a way to do that, to meet that, that creative design. Or in movies and, and the like where, where CGI is being pushed to create more and more realistic environments. Dune was amazing, it was seamless. Um, th these are cases where the arts are pushing engineers to do more and, and to, to develop our own craft. Um, to, to keep up with those creative elements. I love the, the idea of an alliance between engineering and the arts, and I, and I think that, that it, it's going to advance both together in, in all of these different examples, but I'm also inspired by the people. Um, Ashraf's vision, Ashraf Habibullah, when he, when he founded this organization decades ago, um, the, the foresight, the passion, the energy, um, I, don't, I understand he may not be here today. For those of you that have not yet experienced Ashraf, find an opportunity to, to have that Ashraf experience. Um, I, I want to also acknowledge the engagement of the industry and academic partners and volunteers and everybody who's making this possible, but then really the teachers who enable this. I know how hard it is to manage new elements in the curriculum. Um, so hats off to all the teachers that, that made this a part and, and prioritized this as a part of what you did this year. But finally, I, I just want to acknowledge the efforts of the students. These bridges are incredible. Um, hats off to all of you for the work that you've done in getting to this point. And I hope you'll also continue to engage both sides of your brain as you think about where you go next, because why waste half of it, right? So welcome, um, and uh, I look forward to the day. Thank you. Thanks, Mark. Really appreciate the comments, and uh, thank you again for, for making this space available to us and sponsoring us here today. All right. With that, I'm going to introduce the MC, and we are very close to beginning presentation, so um, hang with me as I bring Kate Stilwell on stage. Kate Stilwell was one of the original instructors of the Engineers Alliance for Arts. She volunteered a total of seven years with us, including writing the curriculum and making sure that it was fun for students and volunteers alike. Um, she was part of that key group of people who formed our initial program and she has gone on to um, be a president, 
past president, excuse me, of the Northern, um, Northern California Structural Engineers Association, say that five times fast, um, or sorry, Structural Engineers Association of Northern California. <laughs> Look at that, you know, you, you leave for like five years and you forget all the acronyms. Um, all right, she's now the founder of Jumpstart Insurance uh, and she is going to join me on stage to walk you all through how this is going to work and then she will call groups on stage and make sure that we run smoothly and I will go sit down and stop talking. Thanks, Kate. Welcome. It's a huge pleasure to be here uh, after all these years and come back and see the fruit of the labor of more than 400 students and more than 100 volunteers to create in 21 classrooms at 11 schools with 14 teachers and 129 bridges to show for it. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> and at the end of the day today, can we have some, the lights on stage please? We will have all these awards. Uh, and I have a little bit of housekeeping, and then I will explain how this is all going to work. So emergency exits, you can see the exit signs. We go out this way. There is an also an exit out this way. Restrooms are out this side and be, uh, towards, the, the, towards your left after you exit. Um, there is no food and drink allowed in the auditorium. You s should have seen the signs. If you have food and drink right now, we have a few volunteers, and you can pass it down the aisles to the volunteers who will take care of it for you. And while you're passing it down, if you still have your voting card from the People's Choice Award, you could have, after you saw the bridge gallery, you should have voted for your favorite bridge. You can pass those down the aisles to the volunteers who are now at the, at the sides of the, of the aisles. Um, so uh, pass those along and the volunteers will, um, will collect them. All right. Yeah, they look like this. Anybody who have a voting card that looks like this. All right, as you've already heard, this project, the Student Impact Program, is a cross-disciplinary program that involves teamwork, collaboration, communication. In fact, on the note of communication, there are seven judging criteria. Four out of those seven criteria are all about how to communicate your ideas. The written communication, the oral communication, the sketches, and the class assignments, in addition to the overall design and the engineering of the bridge and whether or not it works. So within just nine classroom sessions, the students designed and constructed a bridge uh, that had to simulate a real life scenario and hold either one brick or two, depending on the scenario, which I'll explain in a second, hold it mid span in the middle. You can't just put the brick on the side. And this is where the bridges will be tested in live demo, where the volunteers will put the bricks on the bridge to show everybody that these students created these engineering marvels. So the, two, the students had a choice of whether they wanted to design their bridge in scenario one or scenario two. And I'm going to describe those scenarios very briefly for the, for the benefit of the parents and others who might not be familiar with them. One of them is situated in Sacramento. And it is envisioned as a, uh, a narrow bridge that crosses the Sacramento River from West Sacramento to the city of Sacramento, holds two lanes of traffic, plus pedestrian and bicycle traffic, as well as a streetcar. So the streetcar has to be able to, can't go up a slope and down a slope. It has to be able to continue going flat. But there is a lot of uh, boat traffic on the Sacramento River. Uh, and in order to accommodate the boats going under the bridge, the bridge has to be able to lift up. So it is, uh, there has to be a movable element in the Sacramento design scenario. So that is an interesting challenge. Um, and in real life, this br bridge is simulating a 650 foot span. Now, the second scenario is in Istanbul, Turkey, and this bridge is three times as long and twice as wide, and it is meant to simulate uh, traffic as well as pedestrian, vehicle traffic as well as pedestrian traffic. Um, and it is intended to be quite high up off of the uh, mouth of one of the rivers that flows into the Bosporus Strait. So 
Um, a, a majority of the uh, students chose the Istanbul uh, scenario, but we have uh, some, a number of very creative bridges that uh, chose the Sacramento scenario. And generally speaking, we will see the Istanbul bridges first in one group and the Sacramento bridges second with a few exceptions that I will note. Okay, so now the, here's how it's gonna work. Students, listen up, as, as if you weren't already listening. <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm gonna say, uh, you'll, have, you'll have two warnings of getting your group together. So here are the three categories. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say um, uh, getting ready. Uh, for example, I'm gonna give an example with the first three groups, okay? So getting ready is damla divide. So what that means is you should like be looking at each other and starting to get your things ready. And then you should start navigating towards that exit right there out into the corridor, okay? Um, up next is a uh, double decker bridge from um, from uh, LHS. I'm sorry, I got I don't have the schools in front of me. Give me just a second. Livermore High School. Thank you very much. Um, so up next, Livermore High School. So that means you should already be in the corridor, and you should be like pr doing your last minute preparations, um, and then you should be navigating towards this door right here. So then. The first uh, group that's going to be on stage is going to be Camilla River Bridge. So then in that case, I'll say, and now on stage, Camilla from Pinole Valley High School, Camilla River Bridge. And you will hear that, and you will be standing at that door, and you will walk onto the stage in front of the podium to the tables here. You will not be carrying your bridge. You will just be walking. There will be volunteers that carry your bridge onto the stage from, I think, from the same direction. The volunteers will load up your bridge with the brick. There will be two microphones, which are coming, which are going to be on these tables here. So you walk on the stage, you grab the microphones, and then you speak into the handheld microphones. There's no need for you to stand at the podium. When you're done speaking, you put the microphones back down on the table. Then you walk off the stage in that direction through those exits there and get your photo taken out on, in the corridor, okay? So that's how it will work. So now, those three, um, the, the names that I just called, please start getting ready, especially um, the Camilla River Bridge. So get your group together and come out to this door, please. Um, all right, so I think that explains it. Um, I have one last thing to explain, which is that this represents the finals. There were already semifinal competition. Each classroom had its own uh, preliminary competition. And so what you're seeing here is the creme de la creme, the best two from each classroom. So only the best for our audience today. Um, and at the end, there will be all these awards. There are 10 different awards. Uh, and including a new award this year for the team that was most thoughtful about the environmental impacts of their bridge. But there are also the President's Award, the Communications Award, People's Choice Award, the top three in each uh, scenario, in each category, and of course, the best in show. Alrighty, so uh, everybody's phones are silenced as a courtesy to the students, I'm sure. So uh, I will now begin. So, um, getting ready is the Damla Divide from Oakland School for the Arts. Um, up next is the Double Decker from Livermore High School. Uh, and now, please welcome on stage from Pinole Valley High School, the Camilla River Bridge. Testing, testing. Hello, everybody. My name is Josh. To my right is Alyssa, that's Ricardo, that's Josette, and that's Joel. Our bridge is named the Camellia River Bridge, and it's to be built from Sacramento, California. Um, our bridge name is derived from Sacramento City Flower, the Camellia plant. The bridge spans over 650 feet with a minimum width of 70 feet to accommodate streetcars, pedestrians, bicycles, and other vehicles. 
Our bridge is a sorry. Our bridge is a trust bridge um, intended to be made of steel and painted gold. As you can see, our bridge is gold to represent the golden state of California. It is also retractable to accommodate to the river traffic. A large part of Sacramento's identity is its beautiful nature sceneries and train rides, which is why we decided to incorporate both of those aspects into our bridge. Um, we designed the tops of our bridge to look like railroads, um, and we wrapped string around the trusses to represent vines, all of which are supposed to blend in with Sacramento's beauty. A roadblock we hit with the design was the exclusion of a pillar in the middle because our original design would have this middle section be separated so then it could rotate. It ended up being more efficient anyways because the <laughs> pillar would just block river traffic from down below. At first, our group wasn't communicating as much because we weren't acquaintances before these, uh, this project. But eventually, our communication did increase, which helped us work together more efficiently. This was also important for us for when we were brainstorming our ideas and incorporating our visions into the final product. In conclusion, this has been a new experience for us, and for some time, it's been the first group assignment we had since before lockdown. It helped us learn how to make the most of limited materials. We also learned how important accurate measurements are and how to do our best as a team. Well done, Camellia River Bridge. Well done, Camellia River Bridge. <laughs> All right, it's always tough to go first. Well done to this team. Um, and uh, there are a few things that I forgot to mention, which is the selection of materials was very limited. Uh, the students were only able to use foam board, uh, string, ping pong balls, glue, pins, paint, and carabiner clips. Those are the only materials allowed. So very restricted use of materials. The second thing I forgot to mention is that the Sacramento bridges uh, have to hold one brick and that the brick needs to be held when the bridge is closed, not lifted. The Istanbul bridge needs to hold two bricks at the middle. Um, so not only is it longer in real life, but it also has to be stronger because it has to carry more weight. And then the third thing for the students. The students have two minutes to make their presentations. Um, at a minute and a half, the timekeeper, raise your hand, will show you a yellow card. Looks like that. Um, that means you have 30 seconds left and you better finish up. And if you see a red card, that means you really need to, that means that's the end and you need to stop talking. And uh, then, your br then your brick will be, <laughs> be put on the bridge. Okay, so with that, um, getting ready, H, from Oakland School for the Arts, H-E-N. So up next from Oakland School of the Arts is Damla Divide. And now please welcome on stage from Livermore High School, Double Decker.
Hi, uh, my name is Dylan Volker, and unfortunately, my partner Riley Badiati could not be here. She is out of town. But um, our scenario was Istanbul, Turkey, and as you can see, we have we have two layers, and our design technique doing this, we uh, we wanted it to keep the same sort of unique, extravagant scenery that Istanbul and all around the bridge just has in general. And it's just we we believed that doing this arch and having it just look a lot more extravagant gave it a, a lot more normal feel as we as we were designing and uh, in uh, in construction we made just about no differences this is pretty much the exact same design and uh, with we uh, uh, we chose we chose Istanbul Turkey because we believed it gave us more creative less creative imitation limitation as we uh, as we designed and as we attempted to make a sturdy bridge. And uh, to make it as sturdy as possible, we made almost every single every single layer that we have uh, double layered and uh, the two triangles at the bottom helped for more stability when uh, when setting down and when putting bricks on and uh, it allows with the triangle having it so you can boats can go through and still be uh, still be able to go through. And uh, in in our final construction, we originally had planned on doing gray as our color, but we thought it looked much too modern as we looked at all the other bridges that we looked at Istanbul. We believed it looked much too modern compared to compared to the bridge in Istanbul. So we decided to go for a light blue and white to uh, give it the best natural, beautiful, extravagant look. All right, has it been loaded? Well done, Double Decker Bridge. All right, getting ready, we have uh, from Oakland School for the Arts, Turkish Bateman Bridge. Uh, up next, from Oakland School for the Arts, H-E-N. And now, please welcome on stage, from Oakland School for the Arts, the Damla Divide. I'm Poink Siana. And I'm Jen Chen. And we um, designed the Damla Divide. And the meaning behind its name is Damla means water droplet in Turkish. And we're dividing it from rising flash floods, which is why we raised it. And so we aim to keep a historic feel of the city while adding a modern touch. So we divided the bridge into two decks to keep the high traffic flowing efficiently. The lower deck is designed for vehicles like cars, trucks, buses, and bikes. And by having the foot traffic and restaurants utilize the upper deck, the people will have an opportunity to enjoy the fresh, spacious air and look far into Istanbul's beautiful view. Yes, so as we talk about the structure, this is a, an arch suspension bridge. Uh, we got towers. Uh, you can see we got towers on both ends and then an arch in between. It's also included uh, suspension cables attached from the arch to the deck. And you, all, you also notice we've got stars uh, right here, um, and that is to resemble the flag of Turkey. Um, and we paint it golden, uh, and that's because it stands out. Uh, the color stands out without clashing uh, with the surrounding architecture. Uh, and you, you might not be able to see this, but we've carved the, we've carved the sides, the towers, and that's to blend in the architecture of Istanbul. And the real, real life materials we will use is uh, steel because uh, it's less, um, it just 
less pollution, and uh, but it can also keep the, the bridge sturdy. So that's pretty much it about our bridge, and thank you very much. Congratulations to Damla Devai. All right. All right. For the students who are presenting, I don't know if you noticed, but you can hear a lot better, especially if you're wearing your mask, if you hold the mic quite close to your mouth. So just don't forget to hold the mic up and hold it close to your mouth. Okay. So with that, getting ready, we have the Rachel Carson Bridge from Oakland School for the Arts. Uh, up next, from Oakland School for the Arts, we have the Turkish Bateman Bridge. But now... Please welcome on stage from Oakland School for the Arts, H-E-N. Hello. Do I start now? Okay. Okay. Hi. Um, my name is Helen, Emma, and Nye. This is our bridge, Hen. It's based off of our names. Um, in a realistic sense, this bridge would be made out of steel because steel is like the most recycled material in the world. Um, and sim simply stated, waste and environmental impacts are minimized when steel is used, making it a good fit for Sacramento, our scenario. Um, because we chose the Sacramento situation, um, we, we did some research and we found out that Sacramento is one of the most bike-friendly cities in California. So our bridge is somewhat looks like that of a bike wheel, half of it. Um, yes, <laughs> sort of. Um, so we used the strings for support as well as to create that effect of looking like a bike wheel. Um, the pedestrian walkways, as you see here, are also raised above the general platform where general traffic would be so that it would be more safe for pedestrians and people on bikes and such. Yes. Good afternoon, everyone. So I'll be talking about the building process. So, woo, it was hectic. <laughs> woo. Um, so we were very optimistic on our building process. We made many sketches, did a lot of calculations and stuff. So we were very confident. So we would come in during lunchtime, after school, made a whole group chat and talked a lot about the bridge. So during lunchtime, we wanted to test out the bridge and we tested it out and we saw that it was starting to cave in. So we were just like, what are we gonna do? Uh, we don't know if it's gonna work or not. But then um, Emma, she came up with a strategy and we're like, okay, we'll give it the benefit of doubt. We'll do that strategy. Then we did that strategy and it came out good and it was successful, su successful and of putting the strings through. That was your strategy. <laughs> and then, yeah, so we did the strategy and it came out good and we're glad that our outcome of our bridge came out like this. And yeah, we're very happy with the results. Thank you. Well done, H-E-N, the Sacramento scenario. So not only are the Sacramento bridges being tested for their uh, load capacity, but they're also being demonstrated for how the lifting occurs in order for the, the ships to go underneath. 
Okay, so getting ready, we have the Blue Copper Bridge from Oakland School for the Arts, uh, which is also in Sacramento. Up next from Oakland School for the Arts, the Rachel Carson Bridge, but now please welcome on stage from the Oakland School for the Arts, the Turkish Bateman Bridge. I'm Jair Ryman. I'm Ralph Julius Casa IV. And this is the Turkish, Turkish Bateman Bridge. bridge. <laughs> it is a triangle support bridge along with cable. It is along with a cable suspension bridge. Yes. Um, the red accents are to represent the bloodshed of the Turkish Independence War. The blood stains are from both the Greeks and the Turkish, the two main participants in the war. It is a memorial for over, the t for over 10,000 Turkish soldiers who made the ultimate sacrifice in defending Turkey. Yes. Along with historical, sig historical significance, our bridge also has an economic aspect. Bridges make or break economies, and with an economy as fragile as Turkey's, it needs to be a make situation. Turkey is currently in a stagflationary crisis, and this bridge will help aid their crisis. It will do this by stimulating employment, making it easier to deliver materials and commodities, and will produce toll income, restaurant income, as well as tourist income. Following the Keynesian economic model, this bridge will increase the economic output of Turkey. To construct this bridge, it's gonna take about 9,500 jobs, which will increase the Turkish employed population by 3.2%, saving Turkey. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we hope you saw the um, economic significance and historical significance as important as we did, and we thank you for your time. This is a well, well done, um, Turkish Payment Bridge, and uh, you may take your bridge to the uh, to the photographer now. Um, but I, uh, just reiterating uh, what m um, the chair of the department said, um, uh, that there's so much going on in the construction of a bridge. It's not just the engineering and the design. There's the ec the economics and the history of it, and the students have really reflected that holistic view of uh, the multidisciplinary nature of any project, whether it's an engineering project or the project of making a device. Okay, so with that, um, getting ready from Oakland School for the Arts, Bridget. Up next from Oakland School of the Arts is Blue Copper Bridge, and now please join me in welcoming on stage from Oakland School for the Arts, the Rachel Carson Bridge. And I'm gonna do a double check on the measurement to make sure it's the, the tables aren't too far apart. Oh, 
Um, hello, my name is Emily Shores. Um, I'm representing a group of three other people. Um, our bridge is called the Rach Rachel Carson Bridge. Um, Rachel Carson was an environmentalist whose work taught us about the way climate affects the health of bodies of water. Um, it's a vertical lift bridge to allow for um, traffic to go underneath. Um, it's wide enough for different types of transportation over uh, the Sac Sacramento River. Um, we wanted the architecture of our bridge to be safe, but also incorporate the beauty of the natural surroundings, which would be the Sacramento River. We combined historic arches with um, more modern um, beams and uh, cables. Our bridge design is a tied arch bridge um, that uses cable stays and beams for support. Our bridge will be made out of steel and stained glass so that when the sun shines on the Sacramento River, it'll like it'll have a beautiful pattern. Um, the pedestrian path of the bridge will have information on the wildlife local to the river and will have a donation box to help fund conservation projects for endangered species. Um, we wanted our bridge to have information about the Chinook salmon who are native t that are native to the Sa Sacramento River and also an endangered species. Um, or, yeah, um, they're overfished. Um, we need to make sure we, we needed to make sure we were keeping the river safe and keeping our bridge strong so that we wouldn't need to repair it and risk harming the, the habitat. Um, so we used steel, um, which will last a long time and it's very durable. Thank you. <laughs> well done. Thank you, Rachel Carsinger. All righty. Really um, keeping the, the legacy of Rachel Carson and what she started alive in this, in this concept of, for this bridge. All right, so um, getting ready is the New Galata Bridge one from Lincoln High School. Uh, um, up next from Oakland School for the Arts is Bridgette, but now please join me in welcoming on stage from Oakland School for the Arts, Blue Copper Bridge. So hi, my name is Cole. And I'm Lars. And this is the Blue Copper Bridge. Yeah. So we actually have the second scenario, the Sacramento one. Um, and we took a lot of inspiration from the Millennium Gates Bridge in London, um, which is also a movable span bridge that opens and closes, um, sort of like a butterfly flapping its wings. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, when we were building it, we noticed that. And we're like, hey, all right. So we researched a bunch of butterflies that were in Sacramento. And one of them we found was a Blue Copper. That gives us a great name and also gives us a color for what we're going to make our bridge. Uh, we also ended up making little benches for pedestrians and making little butterflies because we thought that this bridge could also be an environment where a lot of insects and plant life could grow. Yeah. So it definitely allows for all the water traffic to pass under slash through and um, it definitely has two roadways. And we thought if it were to actually be constructed, it would be made of steel. Um, yeah. We don't have much else to say. <laughs> <laughs> well done, Blue Copper Bridge. You know, I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, I think this is the first year after almost 20 years that uh, we have asked the students to design a movable bridge. Is that right, first year? And, uh, and that is a very interesting and unique challenge, and I really am inspired by how the students have really run with that. But I do want to um, make a note that 
uh, as part of uh, designing and building movable bridges, we did allow one additional piece of material, which is a wooden dowel, which can be used during the movable process, but not for the purpose of bearing the weight of the brick. So that's why you saw a wooden dowel in that bridge that was, that was allowed. Okay, so getting ready, we have from, um, but getting ready is the Angle Heights Bridge. Uh, up next is the New Galata Bridge One. And now, please welcome on stage from Oakland School for the Arts, Bridget. Suspense. <laughs> right. Hello, my name is William. I'm Victoria. And we are, this is the Sacramento Bridge named Bridget. Bridget. <laughs> Very creative uh, name, I know. Thank you. Okay, <laughs> so first off, let's talk about the structures that we have created so far. So based on the Sacramento Bridge, we have made this to be a drawbridge, where right here, this section, it will fold up. And right here, we have a little support section where Victoria will explain that later on. And a little bit more on the design. As you can see here, the beautiful arrangements of uh, decorations here representing flowers. And uh, yeah, in order to accom accommodate with the uh, futuristic design of San Francisco and keeping up with the modern times uh, of Sacramento. And as you can see here, we have designed a little slope of the arch in order to combat with the aerodynamics of the wind. So it won't push up on the bridge um, uh, in order to kind of make the wind flow past more efficiently and it won't harm the bridge as much and so. Okay, so next we wanna, um, we wanna, what's it called? Show how it opens and it moves because I'm really proud of what we did. So this is how it goes up, yes, yes. Okay. And then these sliders here, they slide open this way. Very innovative. <laughs> Very innovative state of the art technology, yours <laughs> by Victoria. Never seen anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, that's it. Thank you. <laughs> All right, Bridget. All right, so getting ready from Alameda County Learning Center, Jackie, 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 Jackie. Uh, up next from Almeida County Learning Center, Angle Heights Bridge. But now, please will join me in welcoming on stage from Lincoln High School, New Galata Bridge One. Hi, my name is Jackson. Uh, this is my teammate Carly. Um, our third teammate, Diego, couldn't make it with us today. We're here representing Abraham Lincoln High School from San Francisco. Um, our group worked on Scenario 1, Istanbul. Uh, the task in Scenario 1 was to, the, the main goal of Scenario 1 was to help the Galata Bridge um, withstand flooding. Um, in 2019, Istanbul sustained extreme late summer flooding. Um, which caused some damage to the former Galata Bridge. Um, what we did to remediate this was raise it 150 feet off the water. This will no doubt keep it safe from floods as floods typically don't reach three stories off the ground. Um, we decided to 
keep its name, Galata Bridge, since it's retained that name for over 200 years. Um, our main goals, besides keeping it safe from flooding, were to make it more environmentally sustainable and to keep all the features of the original Galata Bridge, the auto deck on top and the space for pedestrians and markets right here underneath. Um, in addition to this, we added in a new parklet area on top, you can see here. Um, this will help absorb the carbon emissions from the cars passing below and will allow the residents of Turkey, of Istanbul, to view the beautiful Bosphorus River um, from an um, incredible vantage point. We chose a box girder construction typology for our design because of the immense weight it will need to support along the span of the river below. Motor, rail, and tra foot traffic, along with a full market and public park, need to be supported by a resilient and sound structure. We arched the box girder so that it would be high enough to off the water to avoid flood damage and to allow boats to pass un under un uninhibited. Our bridge is constructed primarily of concrete reinforced with medium carbon steel with some soil and vegetation used for the park and asphalt or concrete for the auto deck. We've learned throughout the building process that it can be quite chaotic to build a bridge with several people. <laughs> and time management is something that is, you know, kind of difficult for teenagers. You know, it's already hard enough to get your homework turned in. And overall, I think even after all of that, our construction was successful. Thank you. Well done, New Galata Bridge. OK, getting ready, Don's Eden Kurt. Up next, Jackie, 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 Jackie. But now, please welcome on stage from Alameda County Learning Center, the Angle Heights Bridge. Hello, everyone. While they're, get, while they're preparing the bridge, I'm just going to take a moment and, um, and comment about how I love hearing the students talk about the construction process. Because I remember from the days when I was teaching in the classrooms uh, that the students always had an idea in their mind of what they wanted to build. And nine times out of 10, what they were actually what was feasible to build was different from the ideas that they originally had. And there were all these course corrections that had to be made. Um, and sometimes uh, not, all, not, the, not all the students on a team would agree on those course corrections. And it was uh, a learning process in figuring out how to adapt as well as how to work together. Hi, I'm Parker Shepard, and I'm Mae Spiegel, and this is our bridge, Angle Heights. So we came up with the name because when we were constructing the design of our bridge, we thought it looked like an angel, and then we saw all our angles on our bridge, and we decided on the name Angle Heights. It's a pun, math pun. And um, light blue is not our original color. We wanted to color it hot pink, but three other groups in our class already chose that color. So we thought light blue was a nice, like, angelic color to match our theme. Yes. Uh, we have three other people in our group, but they could not make it today, sadly. Uh, our bridge is a cable-stayed suspension bridge, or at least it once was, as you can see. Um, <laughs> The foundation of our bridge is a hollow rectangular structure that's supported by the suspension cables, again, at least it once was, connected to three towers spread out evenly um, along the bridge. The towers themselves are constructed with a sturdy layer of foam core, artfully cut into graceful peaked arches, much like those in go Gothic cathedrals. We also added a large circle going through the top of each tower for a little flare, 
in order to visually balance out the two smaller holes that the cables are strung through. The towers are connected to the base of the bridge with extended legs that go down the side of the bridge, uh, so we had a place to glue and pin it to the foundation. The cables are also pinned down to the bridge between the tower section so that those sections of the bridge are lifted by the towers. Yeah, okay. thank, you. thank you. Thank <laughs> Well done, Angle Heights Bridge. And um, I don't know if any of you in the audience who didn't participate in this project have ever tried to artfully cut foam board, uh, but uh, it is very challenging to artfully cut foam core. So uh, to make it into a gothic shape is no joke. Okay, so getting ready is the arch suspension. Up next is Duns Eden Kurt. And now, please join me in welcoming on stage from Alameda County Learning Center, Jackie, 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 Jackie. My name is Gabriella. Um, my name is Justin. We have three other teammates, but they are not here. This is our bridge, Jackie, 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 Jackie. Um, it is a cable stayed bridge and it is supposed to replace the old Gadala Bridge in Istanbul, Turkey. Um, as Gabby said, this is a cable stayed bridge. I'm going to be talking about how the cables are be supporting the bridge. So as you can tell, the bottom part here, we did a lot of testing, and this is really good for compression. When the pressure is put down on it, the cables get tight and holds the bridge together, as well as the cables on top will hold the bridge upwards, so it's not just all pressure going down. These cables going on top will be having cable stabi stabilizers on the end. Sadly, we didn't, weren't able to make the roadway that connects here because that wasn't part of the project. <laughs> um, and then throughout, um, throughout our building, we realized that we had to make a bunch of adaptations we had to make large towers because then this large block of foam will be in the water. And we had to have a, a area where the boats can go underneath. And then also, we, as you see, I don't know if everyone can see, there's the pieces of foam underneath here. As we put the um, cables in, they were very loose. And so we might as well just slap on a piece of foam board. And it was good. <laughs> we made this bridge mostly out of foam board and string, and it took pretty much just like gluing foam core together, and we added these towers so that there was clearance so that water, the waterway wasn't obstructed. Um, yeah, uh, uh, that's pretty much uh, it. That's it. <laughs> Thank that's you. Thank you very much. Well done. All right, I want to give a tip to the students. If you feel like you're done with your presentation, a good way to finish is saying, and that's our bridge, thank you. So, <laughs> all right, so getting ready is Kutlama Kuprusu. Up next is Arch Suspension. And now please join me welcoming on stage from Envision Academy, Don's Eden Kurt. I'm Marcy. Uh, our bridge name is called Dance Eden Kerr, and we chose to build the new bridge crossing the Golden Horn in Istanbul, Turkey. 
such a place as the Galata Bridge that was flooded. It, it unites modern Istanbul with its more historical area. We tried to achieve a concept of a city wide bridge that supports and accommodates many things, like vehicles, pedestrians, restaurants, and those to go underneath the bridge. This requires the bridge that safely withhold a high load and also have enough space underneath the bridge for boats to pass through. So our bridge is an arch bridge. It has a Warren truss railing on top of a shallow arch. The material we would use if we were making it to its original scale would be steel. Some of the problems we have when making our bridge was efficiency, so like being on time, and stability. And one of the things we really had problems with was making our shallow arch even. So our bridge kind of like targets the wishes of the public by being available for transportation and entertainment. Um, one of the designs that we like about our bridge is the clean cut Warren truss and the steel is what makes it um, impact the environment well. Uh, that was Aiden. Uh, my name is Carla. Um, on our original design, we had cables, but we decided to take them off because we, we decided that that would be a waste of materials and it would be too strong. It already is. <laughs> and we, <laughs> we asked for feedback from each other and we were able to improve and invent new ideas and make one design as one. And we were able to reflect together and take off materials, add on materials, and work together as a team very well. Hello, my name is Sophia. Um, we've had lots of fun working and building the bridge as time went on. We even uh, stayed behind after school to continue working on it as we only had one day a week to work on it. Um, our, the name of our bridge, uh, Dance Eden Kerr, means uh, dancing wolf in Turkish. <laughs> uh, that's it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Well done, Don Seed and Kurt. Okay, getting ready, the Dulcet Bridge. Up next, Kudlama Kurpusu. And now, please join me in welcoming on stage from Envision Academy, Arch Suspension. Here. While we're getting set up, I just want to uh, recognize that I made a, an, an error and uh, apologize. Um, I had been calling Alameda Community Learning Center. I had been uh, miss calling it Alameda County Learning Center. So Al Alameda Community Learning Center. So, but here we are with the uh, Arch Suspension Bridge. Our, bri our bridge is an arch suspension bridge. As you can see, it has an arch. Um, our team consists of four people. Two of them are not here today, big sad. Uh, we had Valentin, Miss Flota, Alpha Betty, and me. My name's Axel. Um, as you can see, they have really huge towers at the end. And with these towers, they actually are pretty cool. They can have spaces for activities, such as view watching, dining areas, or if someone might want to live here, <laughs> noise complaint. Uh, our two bridge types, as you can tell, are arch and suspension. We will use materials such as steel and concrete. The design challenges were trying to get the right measurements for each exact piece. Very hard to cut. I learned that the hard way. It's actually surprisingly environmentally friendly. Most bridges you see modern today have a structure here that goes into the water, here, and one here. We wanted to not build here to try getting less structure into the water, which is why we put it on the edges. Some trade-off we considered uh, 
was more support on the edges, but our uh, our team, sorry, our team overgrew this. We thought to overcome this and think bigger, so we used our knowledge, we listened to each other's ideas, and we thought of adding strings, so when more pressure is on here, it will have support from the strings. Our overall experience was fun and yet somewhat stressful. We had a lot of jokes and yelled, and yelled at each other for fun. Um, <laughs> uh, but we also had times where we listened to each other and encouraged each other. Most important, the most important thing we learned about building bridges was um, like it involves a lot of out of the box thinking and it's, come, it's a lot harder when building it because as Axel said, it's a lot harder to cut. Um, the lessons we learned as a group was teamwork because um, there were times we thought for ourselves and wanted to do something better or faster but took responsibility for each other and talked it through if the idea was good and something we can all do together. Of course, there are things we can have done better. We could have done better, such as better measurement or less joking and more work. Although for our first time in class, I'm proud of the proud of the bridge we accomplished and the teamwork struggle we powered through. Well done, Arch Suspension Bridge. Gives really new meaning to uh, living under a bridge. You really don't need to live under the bridge anymore when you can live in the tower of a bridge. <laughs> Thank you for laughing. <laughs> okay, so uh, getting ready, the Alton Castani. Up next, the Dulcet Bridge. And now, please join me in welcoming on stage from Livermore High School, Kudlama Koprusu. Hello everyone, this is our bridge, the Kutlama Kuprusu, also known as the Bridge of Celebration. This bridge was named the Bridge of Celebration to sort of encapsulate all the ways that it celebrates Istanbul and its beautiful architecture and history, as well as our friendship and our teamwork. Um, to commemorate this history, we decided to add walkways and gardening and informa informational placards to um, really brief the history of Istanbul and the bridge. To complement the surrounding area, we decided to have the bridge share many of the beautiful design elements of Istanbul. We noticed that on many buildings, there were mosaic roofs with bluish tones, so we decided to recreate that. We added this design on the inside, but we also added blue to the top and bottom. This will make the top, which is reserved for restaurants and pedestrians, feel more lively and connected to the water. When created in person, the bridge will be adorned with greenery and lights. So for our bridge, we wanted it to be as stable as possible, and that is why we traded out the normal singular I-beam bridge for a double I-beam bridge, which they're not right next to each other, they're spread apart a bit, which will allow for a train area to, for trains to go through. And on the outside, the I-beam trucks and cars can run both directions, and it also is very simple, and it has a streamlined design that allows for minimal use of materials. Um, and we decided to try and have as much creativity as we could with the limited resources, and we tried our best with that. Um, and our bridge is made of recycled steel and concrete in an effort for in to uh, keep in mind the environmental impact that our bridge would have when building it. The top layer of the bridge was designed to hold restaurants, stores, seating, and fishing areas. The middle of the top layer will be buildings and stores, while the outside will have tables, seating ar areas, and possible railings that have space for you to go fishing. Thank you. Well done to the Celebration Bridge, Kudlama Kapusu. Okay, so getting ready, Mariposa. Up next, Adeline Kistani, but now please join me in welcoming on stage from Nia Community Learning Center, the Dulcet Bridge.
Okay, while they're getting set up, I just want to do one more reminder to the students, especially if you're wearing a mask, make sure to hold that mic real close to your mouth so we can all hear you really well. Um, hi, my name is Yadarit. Um, this is Jasmine, <laughs> Diana, and Leilani. Um, this is called the Dulcet Bridge. Um, we didn't have a lot of time since it's our senior year and we were kind of just, you know, getting done with everything else. But um, we kind of liked the way it came out and we were really inspired by the Golden Gate Bridge. Um, yeah. Hi, this is the Dulcet Bridge. Um, to be honest, we don't really know how we came up with the name. It just kind of occurred. But um, the goal with this bridge was to upgrade the existing Galat Bridge in Istanbul, Turkey, so it was able to withstand any climate change or weather that came its way. We wanted to build something strong enough for whatever happened, like all the things that they had to deal with. Um, we modeled it after the Golden Gate, in case you couldn't tell. And we used this main, like these pillars as the main base and then the string to really like build up the tension so it could withhold the weight that was put into it. And um, some of the issues we faced, like she said, we're seniors this year, so we weren't really paying attention to like all this, these things. We're f like thinking of like our college classes and everything. So, and I know personally, I struggled with getting to class on time because it was our first period and I'm not the best at waking up. But um, yeah, that's our bridge. On Dulcet Bridge. All right. So, getting ready. Corpu. Up next, Mariposa. And now, please join me in welcoming on stage from Sacred Heart Cathedral Preparatory High School, Alton Castani. Hi, my name is Leah. My name is Faye. My name is Christina. And we are freshmen from Sacred Heart Cathedral Prep, and our bridge is named Alton Kastane. Alton Kastane is Turkish for the Golden Urchin, as our scenario, which is scenario number one, is set in Istanbul, Turkey. Golden urchins do, in fact, actually exist in the Mediterranean Sea, so, it, so it's kind of like the perfect name for us. Um, obviously, our bridge in this case is silver and not gold, but that's just because we didn't have any gold spray paint at school. Um, if we were to actually make this in real life, it would be gold and it would be made out of steel. Alton Castane is a girder and beam bridge combination since we have this box-like structure for optimal strength and resiliency with two supports elevating it 150 feet above sea level. The box-like structure would provide spaces for restaurants in the middle and enough space on top for pedestrians and vehicles. The bridge includes numerous features, such as windows in the restaurant space and also spaces in between them to display some local artists' pieces. Based on some reference photos we had of Turkish architecture, we also decided to add poles of decorations on the sides of the bridge to enhance the overall Turkish aesthetic. Some major struggles we encountered while building our bridge include first, understanding the requirements of our chosen bridge scenario, incorporating them into our bridge design and scaling, which also ties back to understanding the requirements. To combat those troubles, we tried to think outside the box, but when that didn't work, we turned to our instructor, Mr. Hunt, and our EA mentors for guidance. Perhaps most notably, we also struggled with time management, so we decided to utilize a divide and conquer strategy where the mathematical people did the scaling and measuring while the artistic people handled the cutting and assembling. Thanks to these strategies, we were able to successfully design and construct an amazing bridge. All right, well done, Alton Castani. I wasn't quite sure if you had something else to add there, but uh, if you do, please go ahead. 
<laughs> all right, all right. Um, I love how the last two groups both talked about time management, and honestly, this is not a unique problem to high school students. All of us, no matter what our age, always find ourselves rushing at the end and figuring out, okay, how do we make, how do we finalize the project within the time available? So, getting ready, Gromit. Up next, Corpu. And now, please join me in welcoming on stage from San Francisco, from um, S. FH, San Francisco Hilltop High School, I think, uh, Mariposa. Hi, my name is Miriam. We are the represent of Hilltop School. Uh, our bridge, Mariposa, was designed for Istanbul, Turkey. Uh, we chose our bridge because we like the tower and arches. Our bridge design and arches of bridge design support groups of people. We use three sets of cables and nodes. Um, bridge objective is that our design goal lasts for a long time. Hello, my name is Esperanza. Um, <laughs> this is our cable stand bridge. Our bridge uses less material, so it is better for the environment. We cut is mariposa, since it's meat butterfly, and they can fly anywhere they what the bridge is for us, the people of Turkey. We want to talk of it is also free for everyone. Mariposa. Just as the butterfly is free to fly, the people of Turkey are free to go anywhere they choose. Well done. Uh, getting ready, the Jovanian Bridge. Up next, Gromit. But now, please join me in welcoming on stage from Envision Academy, Corpu. Corpu. Academy. Um, the people that were in my group uh, were Mia, Jolyn, and Shawnee, but they couldn't be here, unfortunately. Um, the name of our bridge is Kapu. Um, we chose that name because it means bridge in uh, Turkish. Um, the scenario we chose for our bridge um, is the bridge in Istanbul, Turkey. Um, our concept design was to make an arch bridge that stretches all the way from one side to the other. And um, I think we accomplished that because um, that's exactly what it does. Um, the bridge type we chose was um, an arch bridge. We chose this design because um, we, th we thought it, it fit best for the scenario that we chose. Mm, the real life materials that um, our bridge would be made out of is um, 
concrete and steel. Um, we thought that this be best fit the scenario. Um, one design challenge that we had was that um, our bridge, or like the arch of our bridge might not be like tall enough or it might not like be like strong enough. One reason we chose, or one reason we thought that our bridge ap is appropriate um, for this uh, scenario was because because it's very like stable and like it's very simple but like not too simple and like not too overbearing either um, and we I really like the design of it because it's like not like it's like still very simple but um, it gets the job done and it's very efficient and it's very elegant um, um, one way our bridge would be environmental friendly um, is that it would use locally sourced uh, materials, meaning that we wouldn't need to waste energy getting materials from uh, other places. Um, the overall experience was very good um, because we we learned to like work together more. Um, thank you. I just want to say it is hard enough to get up on stage here with a whole team when you're 16, 17 years old. But when to get up here by yourself and represent your whole team is even harder. So well done, Kapru Bridge. <laughs> Getting ready, the Amogus Bridge. Up next, the Jovanian Bridge. And uh, maybe I pronounced that wrong. Uh, but now, please well join me in welcoming on stage from Envision Academy, Gromit. Hello, I'd like to uh, start our presentation by introducing our team members. Uh, I'm Ngazi. Uh, hi, I'm Cynthia. My name is Mara. And my name is Javier Marino. Uh, unfortunately, Edgar Nava was unable to attend uh, today's competition. Our bridge's name, Gromit, originates from a, a show named Wallace and Gromit. <laughs> <laughs> Our, show for, uh, our goal for this project was to create a model of a sus uh, substantial bridge which can withstand immense amounts of weight in Istanbul, Turkey. Our team members brainstormed and voted on different designs for our bridge. We then decided that a combination of a girder bridge and a suspension bridge would be ideal for our project. Our model bridge is a combination of a girder bridge and a suspension bridge, which is appropriate for a scenario um, for holding large amounts of weight. However, our our real life bridge would use steel and concrete. The steel would be used for the cables and then the concrete would be used for pretty much everything else rather than using the foam cobord and string that we did use. We believe that our bridge is not only visually appealing but we also believe that it can achieve our goal in being the most successful bridge compared to our peers. Um, our bridge doesn't deserve to disturb the environment and uses a very minimal amount of material to construct the, the bridge. Some of the design trade-offs that we decided on as a group was to not only like change or alter the length of the cables uh, from our sketch, but also to alter the uh, the um, triangles that would be supporting, uh, obviously made out of concrete, as Ngazi said, supporting our pillars here. And also, we added a, it's, un it's not seeable at the moment, but inside of the box, uh, we added a, another pillar right down the middle that would be uh, better supporting for more weight and would just make the bridge overall stronger. So we mapped out how much yarn, yarn how much string we should use and everything. In conclusion, uh, constructing our bridge was an enjoyable experience for many of us. We learned along that the way that every idea that our group made proposed should be taken in consideration. There's no idea idiotic. No one thing <laughs> we could have done differently is to estimate less for 
for we believe that procrastinating <laughs> has a negative effect on our project. Thank you. Well done, Gromit. I love how you emphasized how everyone's voice at the table was heard. It makes so much of a difference in uh, adult life in meetings when the group makes decisions really listening to ev the voice of every single person who's represented at the table. And that's a, a, a change in the culture that's really starting to happen these days that I'm really excited about for the future generation. Okay, so getting ready. Ichindeki Guzelik. Up next, the Amogus Bridge. But now, please join me in welcoming on stage from NIA Community Learning Center, the Jovanian Bridge. Hi, my name is uh, Giovanni. Uh, my kid is here. Um, actually, I couldn't come today due to some issues. Um, yeah, that's it. Uh, so th we chose scenario, the Istanbul scenario, because we, d we, ch we at first we tried the Sacramento one, but we couldn't come up with any ideas. So we just went with this one. Uh, we decided to go with this box uh, trust design. Um, so here on top, there would be all the cars, all the bikes and everything else. And then down here would be all the pedestrians, people walking. These little s tiny squares represent all the shops. Um, these are actually the stairs that lead up, which allows people to cross this arch. Um, uh, creating this design, um, at first it was actually designed for the Sacramento, but then we couldn't come up with anything to actually move the middle part, so we just decided to get rid of that and transfer it over to Istanbul. Uh, creating this. It, it took too much time. <laughs> it should have gone faster. It, oh, mid midway through, I realized boats have to pass through. So this is why this is actually kind of crudely cut. It's not perfect. Um, yeah, that's it. I can't. I, I didn't prepare anything for this. <laughs> I didn't expect to get this far. Well done, Giovanni Ian Bridge. Uh, so many projects have to change course midway through, and uh, so it's really no surprise of being able to. But can you imagine, like, the transporting a bridge from Sacramento to Istanbul? <laughs> okay, uh, getting ready. I ve Yildiz. Up next, Ichindeki Gutzelik. And now, please welcome on stage from NIA Community Learning Center the Amogus Bridge. <laughs> Hello, everybody. So my name is Jack Normart, and this is Dat and Theo. And we're presenting for NEA Community Learning Center, and this is the Amogus Bridge. So we decided on the name, mainly based on a joke. The, t coi the term was coined in late 2020 following the popularity of a video game, in which I'm pretty sure most people our age are familiar with. So we went with a double-decker truss design, or a double-decker design used with trussing, oh my gosh, using trusses to support it. So. We have a pedestrian walkway below with normal traffic on top. Uh, it's able to accommodate for the high volume of traffic through the truss design, which is made of steel. And in the center here, we have a enclosure, which is gonna be where the food court is. So normally, 
there are stands along the entire Galata in which there are food and drink for pedestrians to get as they're going through. And instead, we're going to move it to the center where it'll be protected from the environment and also giving the, you know, a, a new and modern space for the current food stands. So it also will allow fishing and, yeah. So designing Amogus was an erratic task. For example, my initial sketch was a suspension bridge. This is not a suspension bridge. So unfortunately, the main designer, Nam, is not here with us today. He had a prior commitment. And so he came up with the name and also the center design with the glass enclosure. So let's see, what else is there? Oh yeah, so initially we were also gonna go with solar panels for the design, but we realized that would really hurt the integrity of the bridge as we wanted to keep the Galata close to its original design, allowing it to still remain historic as the rest of Turkey and Istanbul are. So instead we went with hydropower, which is below the bridge as you can see. This allows for the natural passage of foot water to go through and generate passive electricity that would normally not be there otherwise. And this allows us to really take advantage of the natural environment that we have here. And um, thank you for your time. Well done, the Mogus Bridge. <laughs> Those of us who uh, have children of this age also are in on the joke. <laughs> okay, getting ready. New Galata Bridge 3. Uh, up next, I ve Yildiz. But now, please wel join me in welcoming on stage from San Francisco Hilltop High School, Ichindeki Kutselik. Hello, my name is Nessie. Hi, my name is Cindy Antunes. And my name is Samantha Ruiz, and we're seniors at Hilltop High School, and this is the Ijindeki Guzelik Bridge. It is located in Istanbul, Turkey. Our team feels Istanbul was captured with our bridge. We've symbolized Islam through minarets, which are commonly seen in the architecture of Istanbul, and that act as solar panels for the lights that shine at night used for safety and amusement. We've chosen gold as the bridge color to refract the natural sunlight during the day, and the city's nightlight throughout the evening. We chose to put emblems on the inner side of this bridge to represent the bridge name, the beauty inside or within. It, was a it, it has a star on this one side and a moon on the other to represent the religion of Islam, which is symbolized on the Turkish flag, and will serve the light. Our bridge will benefit the community because it will run off the energy it produced based on the natural sunlight it receives. Local vendors will be able to sell goods alongside the walkways on the sides of the bridge and will be able to create community. Related to the natural causes that often occur in Istanbul, for example, floods, we chose to go with the idea we found best demonstrated strength and included three levels of reinforcement. Our team's dream for our bridge consisted of all of our ideas since our first drawn draft. From choosing a suspension bridge to incorporating a truss for the back and the fourth passage um, and cables for strength, this is the NSC team bridge. Thank you. We're here to represent Hilltop High School. Well done. All righty. Getting ready. Hasibat and Karagos. Up next, New Galata Bridge 3. And uh, now, please join me in welcoming on stage from Hilltop High School, Yildiz.
Hi everyone, my name is Alejandra Cortez. My partner is Nancy Hernandez. Today I present for the bridge um, from Istanbul, Turkey. They show for the color because the, the flower is the same color. The name is Yildiz, is in Spanish is Estrella. The sign reflection both the past and the future for the Istanbul. The Turkey I went to to improve to be making something new and different. The re, the real life the bridge is made for the material timber state and rainforest constant. Design challenge of my scenario is for the painting for the pieces and put each element together. And the um, and the cord like this is be too strong for the chain claim. The friend went to use the lens material to be better for the environment, but we had end the box to this to make it strong and hold more the width. We learned to communicate when the we learned to communicate when a partner was not present. We would text each other and what still needed to be finished. We like sharing time and ideas with each other. For example, we talked about what we did and didn't like. We also had to make decisions about the colors, the size, and the type of bridge we wanted to create. We were frustrated at first because it was difficult to cut two arches that had the same curvature. We kept cutting it wrong. The most important thing we learned about our bridge design is that the design has to be made with the correct measurements so that it could be sturdy if it were built to stand up against a storm or a river flooding. Thank you. Well done, Yildiz. Getting ready, Farah, up next, Hasivat and Cargos. And now, please join me Welcoming on stage from Abraham Lincoln High School, New Galata Bridge 3. My name is Vanessa. My name is Mary. My name is Jenny. My name is Sophie. The name of our bridge is called the New Galata Bridge. The reason why we chose this name because it's a newer, renovated, and slightly improved version of the classic Galata Bridge. We chose scenario number one, a renovation project on the Galata Bridge located in Istanbul, Turkey. Our bridge is suitable because of the, for this scenario because it is raised up higher to prevent flooding due to natural disasters because of the effects of climate change in a local area. Our bridge is an arch bridge in typology where the weight is carried along the arch and supported by the abundance at the end on each side. The bridge is a dual deck bridge, the top for cars and the bottom for shops and pedestrians. Our bridge's signature features such as the pedestrian and restaurant deck are to be cherished by residents tourists, and future generations. In addition to the features we kept, we added a fishing deck for fishermen to fish that extend from the center of the bridge. Special, special features of our bridge that could make it the potential winning design 
are the peaked arches above the main deck and the special fishing area extending from the lower deck. We attempted to achieve a historical yet modern concept by implementing structural elements from Istanbul's historical architecture into our design. We selected the classic geometric shapes because they evoke and complement the iconic architecture of the Hagia Sophia Mosque, one of the most recognized landmarks in Istanbul. While having an innovative design, our bridge is also environmentally friendly due to the materials used for construction. And to enhance safety for all, we added railings on both sides of the bridge. We, we intend to use primarily sustainable materials for the construction of our bridge, such as steel for the infrastructure and farm concrete for the exterior facade. Steel can be reused and recycled over and over, making it ideal for the longevity of our bridge. It's also, it do also doesn't release toxins to the surrounding environment. Reused concrete is also a sustainable resource because it's long lasting and has significantly reduced its carbon footprint in its manufacturing process by 90% since 1990. Over the process of our bridge, it went pretty smooth. We started with one design and followed it through to the end. We only had a few trade-offs, such as taking away some pillars that we initially planned because we thought they would help mimic the architecture of Istanbul. Thank you. Thank you. Well done, New Galata Bridge. I don't know about uh, you, but it takes a lot of work to cut out all those little holes in the handrail. And uh, I love the reference to the architecture in the rest of Istanbul, the Hagia Sophia in particular. One of the things I love about the Hagia Sophia, I've never been to Istanbul, but I know being an earthquake person that it has uh, withstood more than seven major earthquakes and it's a uh, very sturdy structure. Okay, so with that, Getting ready is Tower Bridge. Up next is Farah from uh, Lincoln High School. And now please join me in welcoming on stage from Abraham Lincoln High School, Hachivat and Karazo. Hello everyone, um, I'm Cheryl. I also have two other team members named Nicole and Brandy. Unfortunately, they could not come, so I will be presenting our bridge today. So I know some of you guys are probably wondering like what might these two people might be? Well, it's actually the name of our bridge, which is Hachava and Cargo. We named it this because we look back at the Turkish history and we noticed that these two people were the main characters of a play during the Ottoman Empire. So we noticed that if we added these two characters, it would tie into that historical aspect as well, into this bridge. And so if you also notice that each deck is kind of double layered, so we thought that if it would be double layered, it would be, e it would be a lot better to hold up all the weight as well. And so we also saw that um, when we tried our first draft, we tried doing a cable where it would go from the very end up to the tower and down to the middle, and then same with this side to the middle, but we didn't think that would be quite effective because if you look at the tension, it didn't really seem to have much tension compared to what we tried here, which was from down here all the way to the tower, to the next tower, and then down to the other end. And we just kind of switched it off. And so if it was like on a real bridge, we'd definitely add more cables as well to this, but yeah, this is our bridge, Hachavan Cargo. Thank you. Well done, Hachavan Cargo. Okay, getting ready, the Broadway Bridge. Up next, the Tower Bridge, and now please join me in welcoming on stage from Abraham Lincoln High School, Farah.
Hi, my name is Cindy. These are my group members, Anna, Vivian, and Alyssa. We name our bridge Farah because in Arabic it means happiness, and we made it to like remind people all the happy memories they made in Istanbul. Um, our goal was to make it connect to Europe and Asia. The red color is to symbolize the um, flag color, which is red and white, and also adding patterns on the bottom of the bridge, which is to symbolize just uh, the color to contrast in the middle. Um, the bridge, if it were to be built in real life, it would be made out of metal, steel, and wood. Uh, it's a cable stayed bridge, and the possible modes of transportation include walking, biking, and driving. Um, unique features of our bridge include patterns relating to Istanbul's culture. In order to include everyone's ideas, we had quite a few talks, and we eventually agreed on something that worked for the bridge. Overall, we had a really fun experience building the bridge and working together. Thank you. Well done, Farah Bridge. OK, so at this point in time, we're transitioning only to the Sacramento bridges. Most of the bridges we've seen so far from the Istanbul scenario, with a few exceptions. Um, and, I want, and I noticed that a lot of the Istanbul bridges incorporated space for food and food stands. So now, I've never been to Istanbul, but has anybody been to Istanbul in real life? One, two, three, four, five. So I'm sort of guessing that um, maybe there's food stands on bridges. Yes, yes, okay, that, that's very interesting because you know, still, we don't have that here in the Bay Area. Um, and I don't think there will be food stands on the Sacramento bridges, but who knows, maybe we'll be listening for that. Okay, so getting ready, the Ridge Bridge. Up next, the Broadway Bridge. And now, please join me on welcoming on stage from Abraham Lincoln High School, Tower Bridge. Hi, everyone. Before we get started, we would like to mention our group members that participate in this project. Unfortunately, not everyone in our group was able to be present today. The members that participated are me, Andrew Wong, Ramiro Morales, Conrad Simoji, and Craven Woodley. Our group came up with the Tower Bridge because there are four pillars in the corners of this bridge that resemble turrets. Our first name is called WSMW because it includes the first letter of our last names. The scenario for our bridge is located in Sacramento that requires a length of 40 inches and a width of 4 inches. This bridge will either be raised by 3 inches or retract at 6 inches. The concept for our bridge is a truss with inspiration from the medieval draw bridges as the bridge raises through the pulleys and cables. Our bridge is a, our bridge is a truss bridge and we use steel to hold the bridge together with concrete as the other material that would pave the roads and help support the bridge. The design challenge of this bridge was knowing how we could raise the bridge. We eventually designed a pulley system using the string to lift the deck up by about three to four inches. Our bridge is appropriate for this scenario because we painted the bridge gold, which represents the gold rush that happened in Sacramento but also represents how sunny Sacramento is. The winning feature would be knowing how the bridge lifts as it will be a sight to see. The bridge will use solar energy to lift the middle section through the pulley system. As we came up with ideas for the tower bridge, we had some design trade-offs. Each of our group members had proposed different ideas for mechanisms that allowed boats to pass beneath or through the bridge, but we ultimately decided on the pulley system. All of our group members contributed, whether it be through making the bridge structurally sound, the mechanics of the bridge, or the overall aesthetics of the design. We worked in tandem and designed the tower bridge, which incorporated our group's thoughts and multiple perspectives as we 
constructed the bridge in its prototype form. The situation was a complicated one as we had about a month or less to finish the project, so it made things stressful and difficult, but we had a group member on our, on our team that helped us with previous experience. Um, there's one thing that I'm sure that all of us agree on, and it's that this was a fun and educational experience that we will never forget. Thank you for your time. Well done, Tower Bridge. Okay, so the, I just asked how many people have been to, to Istanbul. Oh my goodness, look at this. Nice pulley system, that is original. Well done, Tower Bridge. All right, so I, I just asked how many people have been to Istanbul. How many people have been to Sacramento? <laughs> All right, that's what I expected. Um, okay, so getting ready, the Bluet Bridge. Up next, the Ridge Bridge. And now, please join me in welcoming on stage from Livermore High School, the Broadway Bridge. Hi, my name's Gabby. Augusta. Natalia. Kiara. Our bridge was designed for the Sacramento scenario and is named the Broadway Bridge after the Connection Street. It spans 650 feet and accommodates four streetcars, pedestrians, bicycles, and boat traffic because the middle section is a vertical lift and lifts up 50 feet. We each brought our own ideas to the project and used the best components of our individual designs. For example, we incorporated my idea of an arch bridge and Chiara's idea of a cable stayed bridge into the final design. We used a lot of Natalia's suggestions when cutting out the pieces, and Gabby helped, with a, helped a lot with general problem solving. We designed our bridge to fit into the surrounding area while also adding something new and unique. We observed the surrounding bridges and noticed that they utilized a truss design, but not many utilized a truss and arch design. So while also doing that, we added a cable stayed feature with a truss design to help support the bottom of the bridge better and just in general the whole bridge. A key point of our bridge is we would use recycled materials as much as possible, specifically recycled asphalt, concrete, and steel to reduce the carbon footprint of the project. Uh, the whole team learned the importance of research and communication of ideas. Um, at some points in the project, we had to sacrifice visual design in favor of minimizing waste. We had fun working on this project because we worked with new people and we got to know them through their ideas. Thank you. I've heard a lot of teams mention trade-offs, uh, and this team was really specific about the sacrifice between efficiency, efficient use of materials, and the design elements, and that's a trade-off that we all experience in every time we create a project. So getting ready, the Silver Bridge. Up next, the Bluette Bridge. And now please join me welcome to welcome on stage from Livermore High School, the Ridge Bridge.
the name of our bridge is the Ridge Bridge. We all, all three of us grew up here in California, so we've really fallen in love with the mountainous regions of California, and Sacramento is the capital of California, so we decided to name it the Ridge Bridge. So, and also, uh, we have the bridge as it has strong cables so that it can keep itself up with the suspension of it. It also has a drawbridge to move up and down with the boat traffic in Sacramento. The reason why our bridge is different from the rest of every other bridge is due to the construction phase. In the beginning, we all had different ideas and we decided to go for a vertical lift bridge. But during the construction phase, we completely changed everything and made a drawbridge instead. For example, when we were making our vertical lift bridge, it wasn't as strong as our new bridge. This bridge can now hold two bricks, but we were only supposed to hold one. For our bridge, uh, the reason we decided to do a drawbridge rather than a uh, vertical lift is because we can use the cables to tension the whole piece at once rather than having to lift it with the same tension. And for the materials, we will use steel, but for the forums, we'll use recycled concrete. And there's our bridge. Thank you. Well done, Ridge Bridge. Okay, getting ready, Capitol Bridge. Up next, Silver Bridge. And now, from Abraham Lincoln High School, please join me in welcoming on stage the next team, which will come on stage in just a few moments from Abraham Lincoln High School, Bluette Bridge. Hi guys, the name of our group's design is the Bluette Bridge. The reason why we chose this title was because our, group, our bridge represents this beautiful blue color and in French, Bluette means blueberry. Um, we wanted to bring a more neutral, cool toned bridge that feels comfortable and very mellow for the lush Sacramento River sites. Daisy, Jocelyn, Jessa, and I are the designers of this bridge. Um, sorry, I forgot to say my name. My name is Fatima. I'm Daisy. And this is our Sacramento Bridge. Um, our bridge has a 36 inch span and in the middle six inches will be lifted in order for boats to pass through the middle. And as you guys can see, it stays up. <laughs> Two arches are grounded on the foundation on each side of the bridge and cables from the arches are supporting the deck. In our design, we plan to show off a modern and clean looking design focused on the tranquil color palette. To achieve this, we made it as minimal as possible. <laughs> when it came to the bridge type, we decided to choose a suspension bridge with arches because it created good support while making the de design still look very clean. To make this model, we used foam core, white string, T-pins, um, and upon construction, the foundation material will consist of reinforced concrete and the bridge structure will be steel which is very economically friendly. <laughs> um, a design challenge we faced was definitely time management. I feel like um, our group like really struggled with coming up with a design last minute. None of us were really great artists. We don't know how to sketch or anything like that. So our creativity was more so going with the flow and um, seeing how things worked. Another, another challenge that we faced was creating um, circles on top of the bridge. As you can see, if you've seen our poster outside, it had these three beautiful circles that would go on top, which kind of would represent like a blueberry, I guess. But it was structurally unnecessary, and if we were to do it again, we would put holes, like um, cut them out in the arch. Um, our bridge relates to our scenario because Sacramento is known for utilizing tower or industrial bridges, and we wanted to make a more be beauty to design that complements the beautiful banks of the River City. Our bridge will bring life and add a unique tranquil calm to the city. The overall experience with this project was enjoyable, but mostly stressful. 
the most important thing we all learned was that building something takes a lot of steps and you must be persistent. Our group learned how much time and effort it takes to design and build bridges, buildings, houses, and structures. Something we would like to do differently next time is to incorporate the technique that we have learned so that we construct our bridge more faster. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, guys. Well done, Bluet Bridge. I know all of the student groups thought about this, but this is the first presentation where I heard or maybe noticed that the students said, if I were to do it again next time, we would do this. And that's actually something that in the projects that all of us do, we think to ourselves, if, we, we, if I'm going to do it next time, I'm going to do, change this or do this differently. And so there's a whole prototyping process of building a, 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 just a prototype, a first version, uh, before building the final product so that we can incorporate lessons like if I were to do it next time. So getting ready, the Bridgerton Bridge. Up next, the Capitol Bridge. And now please join me in welcoming on stage from Abraham Lincoln High School, Silver Bridge. Um, hello, my name is Suchi, and my group members are Leah and Haley. Um, unfortunately, our fourth member isn't able to attend. Our bridge is for the Sacramento River, called the Silver Bridge. The concept of our bridge is to allow boats and other vessels to pass underneath, while cars and pedestrians can use the bridge when boats aren't passing. Our bridge is a cabled stayed type of bridge, made of concrete supports and steel rods attached to the deck. Our bridge has two layers. The top deck is for people and bicyclists, and the bottom layer is for cars. Silver Bridge will also be environmentally friendly, as it will be made with recycled steel and concrete. It, al it will also be made with alternative me methods and materials, such as recycled asphalt, to pave the road. At first, our team didn't know how to start this project, but we grew to understand each other more, which ultimately allowed us to work and communicate with each other better. After some debate, we decided to use several cables that the Silver Bridge could have the most support possible. This is one example of how we had to collaborate and incorporate all of our ideas for the final design of our bridge. During this project, we were able to learn how to work together, what types of skill each member has, along with what we are capable of. 
we were able, we grew as a team because we were able to depend on each other. With that, we were able to work more efficiently. If we could do anything differently, we would try to include each other more during the concept portion of the process. And that's our bridge. Thank you. <laughs> Well done, Silver Bridge. And it's not the first time that a bridge has suffered a, a bit of damage uh, during the competition, so uh, don't, uh, you're not the only ones. Okay, so getting ready is the Jerome Memorial Bridge. Up next is the Bridgerton Bridge, and now please welcome on stage from Sacred Heart C Cathedral Prep, Capitol Bridge. Hello, my name is Rylan Gutierrez, and I'm currently a freshman at Sacred Heart Cathedral Preparatory, and I'm representing two of my other classmates here, um, Keon Tanksley and Connor Guard, who are unfortunately not able to make it here. So we decided to call our bridge the Capital Bridge because, as you all know, Sacramento is the capital of California. So we decided to make the bridge represent the capital of, Sac the capital of California. It is a cable state bridge that also acts as a drawbridge by having two people on both ends pull both ends of the bridge, pull on these two strings that allows it to retract and open up like a drawbridge. There is enough space for both vehicles and pedestrians due to our scaling system. Each inch is equivalent to 18 feet. This ensures that it gives a considerable amount of room for both cars and pedestrians. We encountered many challenges while making this bridge, but the biggest one is making a minimalistic design that uses the least amount of materials while still being efficient and being capable holding the required amount of bricks. We overcame this obstacle through trial and error and eventually came up with a design that accommodated for both minimalism and efficiency. Because of the simplicity and the use of less materials, it is extremely environmentally friendly. The biggest thing that my group and I learned from this project is being able to adapt and overcome multiple challenges that were being thrown at us. Thank you. Well done, Capitol Bridge. Sometimes less is more. All righty. So, getting ready. SAC. Up next, Jerome Memorial Bridge. And now, please join me in welcoming on stage from NIA Community Learning Center, the Bridgerton Bridge. Hi, 
I'm Hannah. I'm so, so nervous. <laughs> and I'm Amira. And this is our bridge, the Bridgerton Bridge, named after Bridgerton. <laughs> Couldn't chef. tell. Um, it is purple to both represent uh, the King's uh, ba ba sorry. basketball team. Yeah. And it was also supposed to be like pastel to represent Bridgerton, but I mean, it dried a bit too dark. <laughs> um, it was supposed to be a truss bridge, and then something happened along the way, and now it's closer to a sus suspension bridge. <laughs> if this was made in real life, it would be made out of steel because that's the best source for strength and also for the economy. Well, environment. That's okay. um, so our process was a bit complicated. Um, it looked a bit different than this at first, and when the inspector came to look at it, it broke. Um, not completely. It's this still has the original base, but we had to reinforce it a lot more. So um, we would be lying if we said that we did this completely alone. We did have some help from somebody who was not in math class with us. Um, thank you, if you're watching. <laughs> <laughs> but thanks to that, it like actually helped reinforce it. Was kind of nervous because last time it just like broke completely. <laughs> it was horrible. <laughs> <laughs> it was really bad. <laughs> But if we were to do it again, I think it would be to ask for help sooner because honestly, we were struggling a lot to begin with and we should have asked for help from like our fellow classmates, friends and teachers a lot sooner. <laughs> and here's our demonstration of it lifting. Thank you so much, and that was our bridge. Well done, Bridgerton Bridge. I gotta say, every single time I get on stage, including today, I get the, the butterflies in my stomach, I get nervous, and I mess up words, and I say one thing when I mean another, and so it just never goes away. Okay, getting ready, the Capitol Bridge won. Up next, SAC. And now, please join me in welcoming on stage, big round of applause from Carlmont High School, Jerome Memorial Bridge. So hi, I'm Liana Lim, and this is the Jerome Memorial Bridge. My teammates are Wyatt, David, and Kevin. Unfortunately, they couldn't be here today, so I'm going to be presenting alone. So we chose the name Jerome Memorial Bridge after a teammate's great uncle who passed away recently who really cared about the environment. And so this is a steel cable stayed drawbridge. The reason why we chose a drawbridge was actually because it's really flexible, so like if any kind of boat of any height or width wanted to come through, it goes all the way up. Oh, it goes all the way up when you pull it. <laughs> 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 
So it could really go over any kind of river or any kind of uh, body of water because it, since it goes all the way up when you pull it, any kind of boat could come through and you don't have to really adjust the size of the bridge for that either. <laughs> and the color of the bridge was also very intentional because it's very bright and the polka dots were also intentional because uh, we really wanted this to reflect the environment and also be a bridge about community. So since uh, the environment's very colorful, like butterflies or different flowers, we really wanted to reflect that in the bridge and also be a little bit humorous because people will notice a bridge that stands out like this. And even if it doesn't necessarily go in with the rest of Sacramento's architecture in terms of colors, it's very interesting to look at, and I think it'll encourage more people to walk across the bridge rather than driving or even using transit, which will be useful for the environment. And now the reason why we chose steel instead of wood was, <coughs> was because steel is uh, more environmentally friendly in the long term, even though wood would be better in the short term, because steel will take less up upkeep, and it will also be less prone to water damage as wood is. And finally, uh, our group learned a lot while working on this bridge because uh, one of the challenges that we had was a lot of disagreements about whether this part should be uh, put with two blocks of styrofoam glued together or just the single one. And we chose the single one because we believed that that would be cheaper while still being able to hold up the single, the single brick, which it was. And another challenge that we had was actually a deliberate move from a group member to try to break the bridge. But we were able to go against that because we fixed the bridge with this part. So hypothetically, it could be created even more simple than it currently is, and therefore even cheaper and with less materials. <laughs> and so in total, while doing this, we learned, about a, we learned a lot about respect, cooperation, and communication together while working on the Jerome Memorial Bridge. Thank you. Well done, Jerome Memorial Bridge. And did I hear that correctly? There was like insider sabotage? <laughs> Whoa, all right. Well, that's the first I've heard. Um, but I have heard, uh, what we heard a couple of times already is that bridges have broken at the last second and had to, at the last uh, session and had to be built and reconstructed on the last session, and I remember that happening in previous years as well. So up next is, is the Capitol Bridge One, and now please w join me in welcoming on stage from Carlmont High School, SAC. Hi everyone, so I know these presentations have been a lot to get through, but we're almost done and I'm excited that we get to help finish this off. <laughs> so without further ado, I'm Griffin, this is Kevin, and this is Ethan, and we are here from Carmont High School in Belmont, California. We have a fourth group member, Caitlin, but unfortunately she was unable to attend today. 
So our group is named SAC, spelled S-A-C, which refers to both Sacramento and ship accessible crossing. SAC is a cable stayed bridge which will fit nicely in Sacramento's environment. The bridge will create a presence in the area's urban landscape, yet not overshadow the beauty of the city. Our design incorporates elements of historical bridges like the Golden Gate Bridge, such as its arches and cross beams. However, it differentiates itself from other bridges in California by using a cable stayed design. So to accommodate ships, uh, SAC is designed with a liftable bridge deck. As the deck is being raised, the main support cables go out of tension. Then, as it is lowered back into place, the cables go back into tension to give the bridge deck the support it needs to handle traffic. One thing we considered during the design process was to have just the central portion of the bridge disconnect and raise up individually. However, we, de we decided against this due to concerns with that portion swaying side to side or any general instability in windy conditions. Uh, next, we considered having the entire bridge deck lift up. This design would negate any um, issues we have with wind by having the only moving segment be anchored to the towers on both sides of the bridge. We decided to use this design and set about building the completed model, which you see here today. Um, one feature that makes SAC unique is the prioritization of sustainable methods of transportation. There's only one lane for cars in each direction to discourage driving and encourage more environmentally friendly methods of transportation. We wanted to make it as easy as possible for pedestrians and bicyclists to use the bridge. So there is a dedicated lane for each on both sides of the bridge. There's also a streetcar lane going down the middle, which supplies a transportation option for those who are unable to walk or bike. So in the end, although we faced a lot of difficult design choices, we were able to incorporate everyone's ideas and create a design with thoughtful aesthetics and great functionality. Thank you. Well done, SAC, AKA SAC. Alrighty, we have come to the very last student presentation. So please warm welcome from Abraham Lincoln High School, the Capitol Bridge One. Pedro, and to my left is my partner James, and to my right is my partner Preston, and we are here to represent Abraham Lincoln High School. Uh, we are also here to tell you why our bridge is a perfect fit for the Sacramento scenario. Our bridge sp uh, spreads over the 650 body of water with ease and allows pedestrians, bikes, and vehicles of all sorts to pass through. Uh, we named it our uh, the Capitol Bridge because Sacramento is the capital of Sacramento of California. Sorry, <coughs> our bridge also has a function to retract the middle piece to allow the river traffic below. Um, during the work of seeing the details of this bridge, we took heavy inspiration from the Delta King steamboat windows on the arch above the bridge. While tackling the task at hand, we knew that there were major challenges that needed to be overcome. Our main focus was the aesthetics, carbon footprint, and most importantly, the retracting function. To reduce the impact on global warming, we are using locally sourced recycled steel and asphalt for the majority of the construction. On top of that, we carefully took off material on the arc of the bridge to, without compromising structural integrity, um, we did this by connecting steel beams rather than using solid pieces of steel. By using steel beams, we were able to make box shapes along the arch to match those on the side of the Delta, Delta King steamboat. Speaking of boats, our, our bridge is able to open up in the center as my friend Pedro showed us earlier. The middle section of our bridge is a retractable deck that slides back and forth along a rail locking in place when fully extended and retracted. It's made up of reinforced concrete and steel that James said to make sure that it's sturdy and it won't fail. My partners and I have put a huge amount of effort into the creation of the Capitol Bridge so that our bridge is the best that we could possibly make. 
we had several disputes, such as how we should make the centerpiece, what kind of details we should add, and whether they're necessary or not, and what type of bridges are the st strongest. As a result of our strong work, we produced the perfect bridge for our Sacramento scenario. Thank you for your time. Well done. And now all of the judges will send, it will tally up their final scores, but do not go anywhere, stay in your seats, because this process will not take very long. And while this process starts, I want to give everybody to give another huge round of applause to all of the students, both here and outside. Well done, this is a huge accomplishment. I think some of the students said, and this is true, that this is some, an activity they will remember their entire lives. It's so impactful. It ha ha requires so many parts of the brain, and it's really about not just building a physical bridge, but building bridges to one another, and that's something we remember. <laughs> All right, that, as I said, the scoring will not take long because it's all done electronically, but during those moments, I would like to bring on stage somebody with whom we could not, would, would not be possible without the support of uh, Pacific Gas and Electric, PG&E, who has been a longtime partner and sponsor of EAA and who hosted this uh, showcase and award ceremony in their San Francisco auditorium for more than 10 years. So today we are very delighted to welcome as our guest uh, the Senior Vice President at PG&E, Joe Bentley. He is a native of Indianapolis, Indiana. He graduated from Purdue University in uh, electrical and electronic engineering. And he now serves at PG&E as the leader for electrical engineering, electric process safety, and electric design engineering. So please join me in welcoming on stage Joe Bentley. So how about another great applause? This has been phenomenal. Look at the presentations. And I got a board meeting later this month. Can I take a few of you with me to delegate to do some of that for me? <laughs> yes, OK? So that's good. Do that. Well, good afternoon. I'm delighted to be here and to kick off this uh, Engineers Alliance for the Arts, the 22nd Annual Bridge Showcase and Awards. Now, we have a little bit of delay. Uh, we had this actually in the San Francisco office. We're actually moving from San Francisco to Oakland, so I'm hoping next year we're going to be in Oakland again. So, yes. So I'll, I'll tell you, I, I love the EAA mission to inspire and educate students about the interaction of arts, architecture, engineering, and construction throughout all of the Bay Area. Helping students to learn how and why the arts and engineering interact to construct such a better new world around us. And I'll tell you, to inspire and educate tomorrow's engineering leaders by combining both the academic and the artistic skills. I'll tell you, today I was blown away in terms of the design, the problem solving, the team building, the presentations, and the technical skills that we saw today. I'll tell you, I came from the, uh, the Midwest, and, and I was actually leading a, a utility in the Midwest, but I also was on the board of directors of the local symphony orchestra. So I really got an appreciation, even though I didn't play an instrument, of combining engineering and science and the arts together to really have this powerful combination. So uh, I, love, I love this mission, and I love what this organization is doing. But as you think about the, the famous engineers of the past, Okay, you think about that in our side of the world, the electric side, you've got Nikolai Tesla and Thomas Edison. What would you think about without light bulbs and electricity? Have you ever looked inside your home and said, you know, what are the number of devices that run off electricity? And what happens when, when the lights go out? The other thing about, it's not just the transformation of those innovations, it's how do we make them better? Somebody like Henry Ford, who made automobiles more affordable for Americans. Even back, Leonardo da Vinci, when conceptualized things like modern flight and helicopters and solar power before actually it was innovated by people like 
Wilbur and, and uh, Orville Wright in terms of the airplanes. And then where would we be today without Alexander Graham Bell? You know, our iPhones today, you know, started with that first telephone. Now, I have a question for you. So I did a little research in terms of the most famous engineers. Number 10, at least the list I was looking at, was an engineer of modern times today. Does anybody have a guess of who might be that engineer, the famous engineer of today? Anything? Elon Musk. Elon Musk. Was there one back there? Yes? Yes, yeah, you think about Elon is transforming electric vehicles, and you think about satellite communication, and yes, now Twitter at uh, $44 billion as well. So, um, At pg and &E, I'll tell you, our corporate sustainability and resiliency is focused on really three funding pillar pillars. Community resiliency, climate action, habitat conservation, environmental science and education. And we support a variety of different organizations like Habitat for Humanity, the California State Parks Foundation, America Forest Foundation, Marine Mammal Center, and here, UC Berkeley Center for Law, Energy, and the Environment, just to, to name a few. Our community relations program and charitable giving reflects our commitment to the communities that we have the privilege to serve at pg and &E. In 2021, our Better Together Giving programs donated $23 million in support of disadvantaged communities. Examples of that would be the Oakland Promise. 2016 to now, pg and &E has given about $1 million for the Oakland Promise, supporting the vision that every child in Oakland Unified School District graduates in high school with the resources to go to college and be successful in whatever career they want to be in. Also, the initiative around bridging the digital divide. PGD committed about $1 million, including the support of California Department of Education Digital Innovation Challenge and supporting teachers during uh, the pandemic as well. So I'll tell you, at pg and &E, we have a really strong sense of family. And you'll discover an unwavering commitment to the work that we do powering California, caring for our people, our planet, and the prosperity for California. We have an active college recruitment program, and I think we saw that uh, today, where you can actually go on our website, pgd.com, and see all of the opportunities that we have. We have 26,000 coworkers within pg and &E, and about another 15,000 people working for us as, as uh, partners of what we have. We also have an incredible opportunity in the trades organization. So if you don't want to go to college, which is fine, where you can have a great living doing things like being a lineman, for example, working outside. We also have the Power Pathways program. In 2008, we educated and prepared about 1,000 people to work not only at pg and &E, but within the electric utility industry as well. We're also focused really heavily with women in the trades, veterans, and making sure that we actually um, are able to bring them within the organization and within the industry as well. And I'll tell you, we really are delighted about everything we're doing and the partnership we have here at the community in the Bay Area. And on a personal experience, I'll, I'll tell you, um, why did I become an electrical engineer? Well, my father was an electrical engineer. So was my brother as well. They inspired me to go to Purdue uh, University to be able to be an electrical engineer. And I really loved about problem solving and doing things differently. But also from a standpoint, I grew up playing sports. Who's, who plays sports as well? Yeah? For me, I played baseball and, and basketball and football. And we talked a lot about team sports, and I really enjoy, I'm really competitive, but I like the idea of, you know, I like to win. But I like to win as a team. I think there was a lot of discussion today about making sure that you ask your other partners and, and the people helping you. Get the diversity of ideas. Get that dialogue and discussion. Because when you get a lot of bright people together and students, it's amazing what you can could achieve. You saw it today. You saw it. And I, I heard one today which I thought was really great. Don't be afraid to ask for help. So many times we think we have to do it alone and we actually have to go and, and we have to be the problem solver. You can ask for help, be able to, to make it even, even further and even better. So my advice to you as uh, the future engineers around here, okay, make sure that you're really thinking about what you're passionate about. I saw a, a lot of passion, great presentations. Enjoy what you do. Enjoy what you're getting up every day to go to work. 
That's what's fun about this thing. Also, don't, don't be concerned about, I'm, well, I may not know enough. I, I'm not experienced enough. Make sure that you understand you can figure it out. Lean in. Try something different. You know, over 35 years of career, I've done a variety of different things. I've uh, done generation of electricity, the transmission of electricity, distribution down at the service level. I was in private equity and venture capital looking at young entrepreneurs who are actually looking to do things in our industry. So my point to you is do something that really is passionate for you and enjoy everything along the way. And I can't wait for you to be essentially our next, uh, the, the next Thomas Edison, the next you know, Tesla, the next Elon Musk of the future. And again, thank you so much and congratulations to all of you for a wonderful day. Thank you so much, Joe Bentley, and thank you to PG&E and to all of our sponsors without whom we wouldn't be here today. Just a little comment on Elon Musk. Uh, he, this past year, got in a, a elected to the National Academy of Engineering. So this is the highest honor in the United States. Um, but who else got elected to the National Academy of Engineers but some of our own structural engineers here in the Bay Area? Marianne Phipps, who is the leader of eStructure, as well as Jerry Hajar, who is now a professor at Northeastern University. Structural engineers who got their start doing the engineering that we all practiced in this bridge project today. So, <laughs> congratulations. All right, I see Will here. That means that the judging is getting closer to being ready. So, um, Will, come on back onto the stage, and uh, let's continue from here. All right, we are nearing the end of a very long day, so thank you for hanging in with us. The judges are tallying the final votes. We are almost there. Trust me, I was just looking at it. Um, so we have a couple more announcements, which will fit perfectly, and then I think we can get on with it. So this year we're actually excited to announce we, were, we had a, a generous gift from the Chen family uh, and we're able to establish a scholarship fund here at EAA. So this will be the inaugural year of this scholarship fund. Uh, but what it is, is it is open to any student who has participated in our program, I'm looking at all of you, um, who is interested in pursuing a career, either a two or a four year degree at an accredited institution in anything related to engineering, design, architecture, and construction. And so what we're going to do, we're going to, it's actually live on the website right now. Um, you can head to engineersalliance.org and see it live, and we are going to open it up for applications on June 1st, and we are going to announce it on July 1st. So it'll be a pretty quick turnaround. It's a fairly simple application, but we're looking forward to giving away $5,000 this year in $1,000 increments um, to any of those who qualify uh, who can apply. So I want to thank uh, Eric Chin was on our board for a very long time and his family. Um, for making this, this generous donation to start the scholarship fund. Um, so I, I think he may even be watching live right now. So in case he is, I'm going to give him a round of applause. Thank you very much, Eric. <laughs> and we're excited to build on that. So that's something that we think, um, well, one, it will help us stay in touch with all of you as you go out into the big, broad world if you choose to pursue a career in engineering, architecture, or construction. Uh, we would love to hear from you. Um, we would love to hear from you either way uh, if you choose to keep in touch. So that brings me to uh, a plug that I have a little later on, which is really related to, sorry, I missed my slide here. Um, actually, real quick, if you're interested in applying, I'm going to leave this up. There's a QR code there, so go ahead and take a picture of it. It will redirect you to the website. Um, also, the, uh, the link will be fairly easy to see once you're on that engineersalliance.org website there. So thank you again to Eric. I'm sorry I missed that slide progression. Um, I did want to just plug the social media can, uh, accounts of EAA. So we are on all platforms uh, except for TikTok. So if you won't see me <laughs> doing any dances, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm a little too old for that, I guess, in these days. So um, we are on Instagram, um, Facebook, of course, uh, YouTube, Twitter, et cetera. LinkedIn uh, as well, which I encourage you all to, to join in due time. Um, all right, last but not least, I know it's been a long day. Thank you all very much. Um, we are very grateful to our sponsors and the people that make this program possible. Uh, hopefully you've taken a look at some of the names outside. Uh, should you choose or be able to donate, 
Uh, also at engineersalliance.org slash donate is a ability to donate online. If you're able to help us out and help us continue the mission of this program, we would be forever grateful. All donations are tax deductible. Uh, and it is something that you can do any time of the year, not just today, although if you're inspired today, uh, please feel free to do that, and we thank you. All right. With that, let me poke my head outside. Sit still. We are very close. So we'll go, let me just run through, or Kate, actually, am I supposed to bring you back for this? Because I think you're the, uh, yep, you know what? I am. Perfect. So are they coming back again? Yeah? Sorry. It's been like three years since we did one of these in person, and I, it's amazing what your brain forgets. I know you all were, this is your first one, it'll probably be uh, your only one. But for me, this is like my 10th, and you'd think we'd have it down by now, but uh, we're not there. Um, anyway, uh, and thank you, by the way, this is a new venue for us, and so logistically, I think it's worked out very well, but uh, we're adjusting. So I'm going to bring to stage uh, the vice presidents of the Student Impact Project, the folks who make this happen, as well as our uh, chief technology officer, Simon Ng. <laughs> and, uh, and so this is Simon uh, Dima and Rafa, and they're going to hand out the awards and begin to announce them. So please, take it away. All right. Hi, everyone. I'm Simon. So we're going to start with scenario one. In third place for scenario one, scenario one is Istanbul. We have the Kutlama uh, Kupri from Livermore High School. Uh, if, so, so that group, please come to the stage, and we're going to have your bridge as well as your award. This is third place overall for the Istanbul scenario. They did a great job in incorporating the mosaic pattern into their bridge and use a really lovely blue shade on that bridge. As well, it's a, it's a sturdy bridge. So everybody, give it up for... <laughs> Kulama Kupu, Kupru, sorry, I'm murdering that word. Give it up for them, thank you. Second place for scenario one, we have the new Galata Bridge from class one of Abraham Lincoln High School. <laughs> Great work, guys. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm very proud to say that this was uh, two students, three students, one is not here uh, in my class. I think we all agree that the, uh, wor the handiwork on this bridge was done very well. Um, the way that they incorporated that lifted platform to provide you know, open spaces and gathering spaces as well as throughout the rest of the bridge. Uh, I think they incorporated that requirement very well. So great work, guys. All right, and in first place, for scenario one, we have also the new Galata Bridge from class three of Abraham Lincoln High School. Uh, I think we, a lot of people uh, agree that this bridge was very beautifully constructed, you know, down to the last detail of the guardrails. Uh, I know this bridge was cutting it down the wire. I remember picking this up at, on Friday at you know, 3 p.m. in the afternoon, so great work. Yeah, and let's give him a hand. All 
All right, I'm a lot shorter than Simon, so I'm going to lower this. So now we're going to present the overall awards for scenario number two, which is Sacramento, the movable bridges. Um, so in third place, we have the Blue Copper Bridge, bridge number nine from OSA High School. <laughs> Oakland School for the Arts. Okay, I think this student group had to leave early, but I'd just like to point out that um, the moving part for this bridge was really, really unique. It's not a method of you know, moving that we even thought of as the SIP team, so it goes to show um, how creative our students are. So really, really cool. All right, so uh, in second place overall for scenario two is the Tower Bridge from Abraham Lincoln. It's bridge number 31. So I have to say, this bridge was really impressive just with the way that the um, moving part was built into the structure. It's like very clean with how it moves with the pulleys and the mechanism that the students designed was really impressive. Um, just looking at it, you can't even tell that it's a movable bridge and then it glides really smoothly. So um, great job, you guys. Uh, up next, we're going to announce the People's Choice Awards, just to leave everyone in suspense for um, the first place in show, because I did the awards out of order, uh, so bear with us. Um, but the People's Choice Awards was voted on um, as folks walked through the bridge gallery, and they were able to pick what their favorite bridge was. So I'm happy to announce that um, the People's Choice Awards bridge was the Broadway Bridge from Livermore High School, um, bridge number 32. And we're gonna, we're getting your bridge right now. There we go. Next, we're going to announce the Nancy Bonville Communications Award. So, uh, the bridge that's winning, or the bridge team that's winning this award, uh, exemplified really clear communication skills, both in their essay as well as their oral presentation. Um, and so, this award goes to the Jerome Memorial Bridge from Carmont High School, bridge number forty. Great job. All right, next up, we have the Karen Melander Award. So this award is going to the student group that uh, incorporated you know, environmental, social, uh, and 
you know, other aspects to their bridge aside from just the structural component. So that award will go to Atlin Castani Bridge from Sacred Heart Cathedral Prep. So we really enjoyed how uh, you know you incorporated the artwork aspect um, into your bridge, you know, along with the stained glass that you showed, uh, just actually in your model as well as, well as in your uh, oral presentation. So great work. All right. Up next, we have the best in class award. Uh, so the first best in class award goes to Domla Divide from Pinole Valley High School. Come on up. Oh, sorry. I got some bad information here. Apologies. Oakland School for the Arts. The next Best in Class award goes to the Rachel Carson Bridge from Oakland School of the Arts. Come on up. <laughs> if they're still around. They'll still get the award. The bridge itself deserves a round of applause. Everybody, thank you. All right, uh, up next for best in class is the Turkish Bateman Bridge from Oakland School of the Arts. Come on up. I think we can all agree that this is a very intense bridge. Well done, thank you. All right, the next best in class award goes to Bridget from Oakland School of the Arts. Come on up. Definitely have to appreciate the intricate design that they added to the front of the bridge. Everybody, round of applause, please. <laughs> All right. Our next best in class award goes to the Bridgerton Bridge from uh, Nia. Come on up. I gotta say, this is one of my favorite colors on bridges I've seen this year. All right, round of applause, everybody. Oh. All right, one more time. All right, and our next best in class award 
goes to the Amogus Bridge from Nia. Please come on up. Something to definitely appreciate about this bridge is the use of the clear film to make the glass panels. And the truss pattern is pretty hard to cut out, I will say. All right, uh, for the next Best in Class Award, it goes to from uh, ACLC, the Jackie, 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 Jackie Bridge. Come on up. Yes, they're coming on up. Let's clarify, ACLC, Alameda Community Learning Center. There it is. All right, the next best in class award from Abraham Lincoln High School is Farah. Please, come on up. Definitely got to love the uh, intense red that they use for this bridge. All right, another round of applause, everybody. <laughs> All right, and from the next best in class award from Envision Academy is Dan's Eden Kurt. Please come on up. Another bridge in an intense shade of red. Very robust, very sturdy. <laughs> All right, thank you very much. Round of applause, everybody. Round of applause. All right, and so our next Best in Class Award from Envision Academy is Untitled or Copru. Please come on up. This bridge comes in a very unique shade of green that we haven't seen in any of the other bridges this year, so definitely want to commend them for that one. All right, round of applause, everybody. Thank you. All right, our next Best in Class award coming in from Ida B. Wells is the Uzan Kemmer Bridge. And 
and they might not be here, but the bridge still deserves a uh, round of applause, everybody. Thank you. <laughs> All right, and our last Best in Class award goes to San Francisco Hilltop. It is Mariposa Bridge. Come on up. I definitely love the symbolism of the bridge. Uh, the cables are nicely braided for extra strength, and each cable is pulling its own weight. And something that you might not see from the back is it's got a really great shade of blue. It's a nice, even shade of blue that's hard to achieve. All right, and I'd like to invite Will back up on stage to announce the President's Award. Will? All right, thank you. We have two awards left, uh, the President's Award and the Best in Show Award. So um, this year for the President's Award, I selected, and I'm not going to get this name right. I got to do it my best effort here. Um, <clears throat> geez, oh, man. I didn't even take the <laughs> – the, I have found the number, the – Insideki Guzelik Award from SF Hilltop High School. Sorry, it took me a while to find the name. The thing I really like, <coughs> the thing I really loved about this bridge was the symbolism of the star and the moon. They did a really great detail. You can't quite see it with half a ping pong ball that's painted gold. And then the representation of the minarets that tied into Istanbul's architecture. So <laughs> do it. Yeah, go for it. Get in there. This is your day. So thank you. All right, and with that, I think we are ready for our final award. Number one for the Sacramento scenario is from Carlmont High School, Sac Bridge. Come on up. This bridge has a, a wonderfully efficient design, comes in a, just a really shocking shade of orange, which is great. And um, just overall, it was great to see the moving mechanism move the way it did. All right, everybody. All right, and a round of applause to everybody. <laughs> All right, and I'd one more time like to hand it off to Will uh, for our closing segment. Mask on, mask off, mask on, mask off. All right, we are done. Uh, thank you all very much for coming. Um, here is a reminder, please take everything that you brought into the auditorium, trash, anything out with you. Volunteers, if you could stay and help clean up, it would be much appreciated. Am I missing? And please take the food. Please take the food. Please take the food. Thank you. Classroom teachers, classroom teachers, if there are group members that got an award that are not here, you can come up and get awards for them.